Okay, that works. Okay, thank you, thank you for this kind introduction. Uh, welcome, everyone. Uh, so, yes, my talk will be about TypeScript and specifically about TypeScript performance. Uh, a few words about me. I currently work uh, at the Guild on open source, and I also co-organize a Wrocław TypeScript meetup in Poland. So this talk will have three main parts. Like we'll have an introduction to the topic of TypeScript and performance. Then we'll go over uh, some ways to debug it and how to improve it. So let's get started with the introduction. So what even is TypeScript and why are we using it? So for this, uh, Josh Goldberg uh, has really nice slides like illustrating the benefits of TypeScript, so I figured that I can just borrow them. Uh, but he, he did agree. Uh, so here's an example of a function. Like I have this, uh, this is React, but it doesn't really matter. And there's a function, my button, it accepts, accepts an onclick and passes this onclick to an HTML button. And the thing now without TypeScript is that I can pass whatever I I want, and I will only see an error in my browser, in like my client's browser specifically. So that's not bad. And now with TypeScript, we have this benefit that we can cache these errors on our computers. We can cache them like during the build time or in our editors, and that makes refactoring and bug fixing much, much easier. But to make this happen, to like have TypeScript showing us those errors, there's, there, are some there are some steps that TypeScript has to take and that they can take some time. So uh, let's talk performance. Usually when we talk about performance, when we you know, think about it, we think about the runtime performance, how things are fast for our users. But today we're gonna focus on our tooling, on the developer experience. So here should be a meme. Uh, yeah, I don't have, okay, I'm gonna, uh, join the hotspot. Okay, anyway, so let's, uh, let's ignore that. Uh, there was a meme from a Formula One pit stop, like, you know, when they are like super, super fast with like changing the, uh, the tires. So when we are building a feature on, or when we are like fixing a bug uh, on production, we'd like to be like a Formula One driver that you would normally see on the slide. Um, we want our tooling to like get us up to speed. We don't want it to slow us down. And we want it all to be set up like a whale oil machine so that uh, our process is better. Because the better pr process we have, the uh, better value we can bring to our clients. And I think that's an important topic because lagging editor or you know having to wait for TypeScript to compile like every uh, every time can be quite annoying. And there are like two ways to deal with it. You can go take a break uh, many, many times per day, or you can go and improve it. So no judgment if you choose the former, but today <laughs> we're gonna see uh, how to, uh, what to do when you decide to go the second option. So um, when I came up with this talk and um, when, I, uh, when I was like thinking what I want to show, I was uh, recalling all horror stories I had with TypeScript like over the years. And here is one of them. Okay, so this is, uh, I have spread objects here. And I know that this code looks ugly and it doesn't seem practical, but believe me in production, it could be hidden behind some fancy objects and there could be a use case for this. And the thing is that uh, a while ago, I could like wait for the result and wait, let me restore TypeScript server. Uh, yeah, it, it will be loading and loading and it will eventually crash. And it was actually fixed. So if I go to the latest version, I see the result like right away. I didn't even have to wait for it. So uh, that's one of the things that were fixed in TypeScript related to performance. So thank you all TypeScript team for fixing those kind of issues for us. And then another thing I was thinking about, like, you know, what could, what could I show? I decided to try Hasura because I was working there and it was a fairly huge application. So I went to the fork I had 
on my computer, I pull the latest changes, and I run TypeScript compiler. It was almost 30 for, uh, 35 seconds. That's quite a lot. So the first thing I did was to upgrade TypeScript, and it went down to less than 12 seconds. And I didn't do anything else. I just upgraded TypeScript, so that was quite impressive. And thank you again, TypeScript team. So now, why am I even telling you this if it's not relevant? Why am I telling you about issues that were already fixed? Well, it's because this is the first takeaway from my presentation, to always keep your TypeScript up to date. Because it got like, much, much better over the years, and especially now they're pushing a lot of performance improvements. So you can use the Pandabot or any other tool that keeps your dependencies up to date to make it easier. But remember about keeping TypeScript on the latest version. However, that's, uh, that's not always enough, and you can still mess up with your code. And like logically thinking, you can, um, I can imagine that the bigger the project is, the, the more problems you have that because the more files TypeScript has to go over. But uh, it can be true, but it's not necessarily true. You can also have issues with smaller projects. And I'm going to show you one of them. So I'm going to close the previous one. OK, so here I have a really, really small uh, website. And what it does, it literally renders four buttons. It doesn't do anything else. They, those, those buttons even don't have any logic. And the compilation type that is 14 seconds. We can see that check time here is 13 seconds, like over. So this is quite bad. Like uh, What I have here is style components. Here is my button component. Um, no, this is not this one. Uh, give me a second. I want to show you a bad button component. Not a good one. Yeah, so here is my bad bu uh, button component. And it's what? It's 15 lines of code. And still the, 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 the check time is so, so slow. So now imagine if I had a bigger website. Imagine if I had like eight buttons, something like that. So this is, uh, this is what we are going to talk about today, how to improve those kind of things, how to debug them. Uh, but first, uh, I want you to go over uh, steps that compilers, compiler takes so that we have a better understanding of what's going on under the hood. And I think it's, uh, it's good to know that because then you can like, pinpoint what part of your compilation process is causing issues, and then you know how this particular part is uh, like how, how, uh, what improvement is going to require. So it starts with a program. It's the, the most important part. It's an object that has all the compilation context. It takes your TypeScript files that you want, to, uh, want TypeScript to go over and a configuration. And then we have a scanner. Uh, the scanner takes your code and converts it to a, token of, uh, to a stream of tokens. Here is an example, so like everything you have in your code is going to be uh, converted to a token. And after we have that, we have parser, which brings context to those tokens, to the stream of tokens. So for the same example, we have, um, we have this abstract syntax tree so that uh, the, the, the parser goes over the tokens. And for example, when it says a const keyword, then it knows that there will be a variable declaration. And then with, when it says an identifier, it will know that it will be an identifier of this particular variable declaration, and so on. Uh, next, we have a very, very expensive step. Uh, it's called binder. And it gathers um, information about the whole context. Uh, it's a single run through the entire AST. And it picks up some information that will be needed in the next steps. So for each node in this AST, it creates an additional metadata. Um, it also keeps track of the scopes so that the features like go to definition in VS Code or like other editors are uh, possible. Uh, and then once we have this information, we have the checker. So this is like where the most of the diagnostics uh, are coming from. It's quite huge. And it has two uh, major responsibilities. One thing is to check if types are assignable to each other. And the other one is to infer types. Like whenever they, there are gaps, it needs to fill them. So um, there is, in fact, like a lot of back and forth between checker and binder. Like the checker is relying on the symbols table a lot. And one thing that binder does, it sets up, sets up parent nodes on each node. Because sometimes what TypeScript is like on the one level of the tree, and it doesn't know the type, 
it needs to like go up the tree to see, for example, oh, there was a function signature. And based on that funct uh, function signature, it can, uh, it can deduce the type and then go back down the tree and fill the gap. And now that this is ready, uh, we have transformers. So it takes the AST, and um, if, we have, if you want uh, the JavaScript code, it strips all the type information. If you want uh, declarations, it strips the, all the JavaScript code. And finally, we have uh, the emitter part that emits the files that we requested, if we requested any. OK, so those were the steps. And you saw that there were quite a few of them. Some were more expensive, some were less expensive. And in general, I like, what's the best way to be fast? Like, not only about you know, TypeScript, but if, if you have like, a huge list of to-do items and you would rather have a free weekend, what can you do with those to-do items? You can do less. So now, the thing is that with, uh, with the TypeScript compiler, we can't really eliminate the steps, but we can make it do less. And now I'm going to show you how we can debug it so that we know where we can optimize and how we can optimize our code. So my build takes forever, my ID is lagging, now what? Well, the first thing I usually do is to run uh, TypeScript diagnostics. There are two plugs. Uh, diagnostics, it, it will give you like a shorter, more user-friendly output. And extended diagnostics will give you, well, like an extended version of that. Uh, here you can see how it maps like the compiler steps to the diagnostics output. You, we can see like the parse time, bind time, check time, emit time, and some more information in this output. OK, so now uh, we can look at some things in this uh, diagnostics output. One thing is, do these numbers roughly correspond to the number of files you have in your project? Because if not, if those numbers are like really, really huge and you have a small project and you suspect it, to, like, it should have been lower, then you might have uh, misconfigured exclude and include in your TS config. So uh, there's a useful thing. It's a list files plug you can use to see what files TypeScript is picking up for the uh, compiler. And uh, it's, in general, it's not a user-friendly output. So you can use a Web3 map CLI to visualize it. So when you run it on the project, it will, uh, it will give, uh, open this HTML file. And you have all your files and their sizes visualized on your screen. The next thing is a slightly related high program or write time. It also can indicate that you have misconfigured, exclude, and include uh, TS config settings. And um, one additional flag that you can use to like, see what exactly is the configuration that TypeScript uses is a show config uh, flag. It's especially useful when you extend over multiple configs. You have a config that extends another config, and that config ex extends from another one. OK, and now the most interesting part. Uh, what, if the high, uh, what if the type checking time is high? So uh, we have a generate trace plug, which is uh, one of my favorite things and the clue of this presentation. So I chose a Calcom uh, a web uh, application for the demo. It's open source. And um, I figured that it's quite interesting. So let me go there. So uh, to generate. Uh, to use this flag, you run a TSC generate trace, and you provide an output directory. I already did it so that we don't waste time during this presentation. So I will close this. And what it does, it, uh, it creates this output directory with two files, trace.json and types.json. So now what I can do, I can, um, I can go to my browser and uh, load them in the uh, uh, tracing tab. I also already did that, but if you, uh, if there, there is this button, you can click it and then load uh, the trace, like the, the generated trace from your computer. So uh, what you can see now is that, um, yeah, I'm not sure if that's the one. Okay, let me see uh, if this is the one. I will go to apps web. Trace. Oh, yeah, that's the one that I wanted to show you. OK, so we see some things. Like, firstly, uh, this looks interesting. Like, this, 
there's a lot going on. So let me zoom it in. And I can see that there is this check expression that takes a significant amount of time. And I have, um, I can make it bigger so that you can see the metadata. So here I have the, the file where it's declared. I also have a position and end of the uh, check expression that um, we are debugging. So if I go to this file, this is uh, a router to six. This one. And let me restart TypeScript server. Okay, there is a router and it's loading for the, for the sake of this presentation and to make things faster and smoother. I was afraid that my computer is gonna lag too much, so I printed the error that, uh, oh yeah, we already see it. Okay, so there is an error. The infer type of this node exceeds the maximum length of uh, uh, length the compiler will serialize. So this means that we should probably refactor this part or we, can, we should do something about it. But having the, um, the trace output gives us this possibility to easily pinpoint what part of our code base is causing problems. Because normally it would take us you know, a really long amount of time to figure out what exactly uh, is, is going wrong, what exactly is taking so much time. And now uh, another thing, let me, let me zoom out. Um, OK, here we have something interesting with this structure type related to. Now what, oh, okay. now, what if you see uh, things like that, like a uh, long time for structure type related to, there can be other things like related to, but uh, here we have a slightly different metadata. We have source ID and target ID. And we, uh, we can see what file it is. It's a uh, handle child, child run event types test, yes. And, uh, then, based on the source ID and target ID, we can, we can copy this, uh, this ID, go to our, this time, types JSON. We can use go to line uh, VS Code feature, paste this ID, and we know what type is causing problems. And then, based on this information, we can go back to our code and see where this was used and possibly do some improvements there. So this is how you work with the, uh, with the generate trace. And now one uh, interesting thing, thing is that um, something you can do is use TypeScript slash analyze trace tool, and that will print you all the hotspots you have in your code without uh, having to look in your trace JSON. So it could be a nice step to, um, to, to, to get to know what are, hot, what are the hotspots in your code base. Okay, now let's move to improving. So there are a few ways of how things can go wrong, a few ways of how uh, things may be needing an improvement. The first one is it doesn't work the way it's intended to. So that means that it probably picks up wrong files, maybe it uh, picks up too much or too little. So the, uh, the solution here is to check your configuration, check your TS config to make sure that everything is configured properly. Then what if it works the way it's intended to, but it's doing too much work? What if it's too slow? Then uh, we have a few things that we can do. The first one is to name complex types. I have uh, an example here that I want to show you. Uh, we'll make it slightly bigger. This is an example from a uh, Zod validation library. Uh, they, uh, they made a change to improve type checking time, and the change was the following. So previously they had a Zod formatted error, and inside they had an intersection with quite a complex type. There are a few conditionals. Uh, there's like, y you can see that there's a lot going on. There's like a recursive type, so it's quite, uh, it, it, you, you can easily imagine that it could take some time. And then they ex, uh, extracted this complex part to a separate type alias. And now why it improved the performance was because this recursive Zod formatted error can be cached by the compiler. So the compiler doesn't have to recalculate it every single time that Zod formatted error 
this one is called. So that was uh, about naming complex types. Now let me go back to my slide. And uh, I was showing you this example of slide components before. So sometimes you have to make your code simpler or your types simpler to, to improve something. Sometimes you have to make like a refactor. So um, I showed you the button before. And now let me go to a refactored code. And uh, here what I have, uh, I also have this uh, index file that renders exactly the same buttons. They look exactly the same. But here I improved this code base a bit. I, ex I uh, declared some, uh, a, a namespace. I declared an interface with button props so that they don't have to be inferred by side components, which is quite expensive. I provided it myself. And uh, then this, uh, I created a button function instead of using a higher order function from start components. And now if I run uh, yarn good, which should run the diagnostics for the refactor code, we can see that it was done in, uh, in less than three seconds and the type checking, the, the, the check time is two seconds. It's still not it's probably not very, very good, but it's quite an improvement after, after over 13 seconds. So uh, the takeaway here is to not show off. Don't skateboard on, skateboard, don't skateboard on a rake. Uh, keep your code reasonable. Okay, and now uh, I have another, okay, I have some time. I have another example with uh, helping TypeScript skip inference. So this is something like I, uh, I found a few weeks ago in a project that I'm currently working on. It's a GraphQL code generator. So let me open it. I will close the Calcom uh, one. And here I have, um, here I have this uh, Babel TS file. And when I opened the trace output, uh, with the code gen, I can see that there is something wrong around this type. I can see that this, like type checking of this type is taking like a lot of time. And then when I did some debugging and I went down this, uh, this, this path of this, uh, like uh, checking what sources and what targets are being compared, I found that uh, TypeScript is doing a lot of work when it tries to, uh, infer this plugin object type. So what I did to fix that was to, um, I don't remember how my, uh, I will just check out to master. Okay, so what I did, I passed a generic uh, argument to this declare function and that way this is, I, I passed this first generic argument, this object, uh, ob uh, object and then I allowed TypeScript to skip the inference for the second argument because we see that it has a default. So now it doesn't have to run inference. It can skip it. And if we compare, we see here that we had this variance, uh, get variances worker uh, in the trace output. And now if we went to, the, uh, to this new code, we don't see it anymore. So that's another example of what you can do. You can help TypeScript skip inference in some uh, cases when the inference is causing a bunch of issues. And then uh, also another thing is to be reasonable about your TypeScript code. So TypeScript offers you like a lot of really, really cool features, but we need to be careful of how we use them so that we don't push the compiler outside of its limits. So I will close the style component example and I will show you, I think the last one. Uh, so here what I have, I have a string literal types. And those string literal types are supposed to uh, represent a date. But you can see, oh yeah, there's an union of uh, 74387 items. That's a lot. Uh, and well, when, well, the thing, is, the, the thing here is that maybe we don't have to represent dates in such a verbose way. Maybe we can, you know, 
uh, agree that it could be a string or at least some of those types could be just a string because now the type checking of this single file which has 54 lines is taking uh, 112 seconds. Well, yeah, we don't want that, yes. <laughs> um, okay, so again, don't overdo it. Okay, so now, uh, next. It works the way it's intended to. We have good configuration. It's doing the minimal required work because we applied some uh, performance optimizations and we refactored our co code accordingly, but it's still slow. So what we can do now is we can help TypeScript cache some information. We can use the incremental flag, which tells TypeScript to save information about the project graph from the last compilation so that the next time TypeScript wants to compile your project, it will use this uh, information. The, uh, the, this information is saved in tsconvig.tsbuildinfo, uh, unless you specify uh, the name of this file to be something else. And then, based on this file, based on its content, it will calculate the least costly way to type check and emit changes to your project. Okay, and what if it's still bad? If it's still bad, you have to open a new issue. You have to remember about a few things. You have to look for uh, related issues. Maybe something like that already exists. Uh, we don't want duplicates. Uh, you have to make sure that you are using the latest TypeScript because, as I told you in the very beginning, that's the most important, pa uh, important part. Uh, maybe your issue is already fixed. And then I'm sure that someone will help you. So to summarize, uh, it was the same uh, meme with the Formula One driver. <laughs> So um, we, we have seen some interesting stuff, uh, and I hope that they will help you to uh, deal with some performance issues. And even if you don't have any right now, maybe if you ever face them in the future, you will know how to, how to proceed. So, um, but I want to leave you with one more thing. So one final thought, like don't overdo it. Uh, don't get fixated about performance to the point that you forget about other things. So when you are sharpening your axe, which is your tooling, don't forget about the actual tree. Okay, so we can scan this QR code and everything, every single thing that I was talking about, uh, it will be on my blog under alexander.code slash talks slash talks slash bjs 2023. I will fix that. <laughs> I promise. And yeah, thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs>